Okay, so in my other video, part two, we spoke about how um, John the Baptist was being called Creepy John, and Caleb doesn't like it. Uh, and I showed, I showed from the Gospel that not even John the Baptist was so filled with the Holy Spirit that he didn't have doubts. Once again, the Chosen presents these people as human, as vulnerable, as relatable. And, uh, and Caleb doesn't, doesn't seem to like that at all. Now he's going to go on about Simon Peter. How Simon Peter is portrayed. Take into account that the, that the portrayal we're getting of Simon Peter is, once again, a, a artistic license. Okay, uh, there's, There are certain things we know about the apostles before they became Christians. There's a lot we don't. Okay, and now we're going to have another act, basically another accusation of blasphemy against Dallas Jenkins and the rights of the chosen um, concerning uh, how they portray Simon Peter. The second thing that bothers me is the way that Simon Peter is presented as a whole. He's presented as a brawler, <laughs> a gambler, before it was gambling. And now it's working. Someone who's always drinking at the pub. <laughs> drinking alone again, Simon? Well, you merchants need twice the help at sea. I need twice the help on land. Oh. Oh. Uh, he's a Roman collaborator. Oh, slow down. Slow down. And it's implied ever so subtly that he committed adultery against his wife. What? Simon Peter committed adultery against his life. It's implied ever so subtly. I just need you to trust me on this. Please. You answer to God, not me. But next time, you answer to the both of us. Because whatever this is, I don't have the strength for it twice. Okay, okay. That scene actually had nothing to do with possible Simon Peter going and having some uh, rough bit of sailorina on the side but still let's go and have a look and see what else happens I haven't been honest with you ah there's no th there you go there you go he hasn't been honest he's like so he must have been banging some woman um, behind the uh, fishing nets as they dried woman now it seems to me ah now he says there's no woman on there Okay, now it's clearly shown from here that Simon Peter has been keeping secrets from his wife. Okay, that's not what's being said here at all, that that secret is a woman. And I'm quite sure there are many husbands out there and wives who have, who have found out that their husbands or wives themselves have been keeping secrets. And the first things they thought is, have they been having an affair? Isn't it amazing that it's pot there's a possibility that 2,000 years ago, men and women still had those same suspicions of each other? But, but either way, there's, there's, there's nothing involved in what's there to, uh, to link... Simon Peter, or suggesting that Simon Peter had an affair with his wife. I, I really don't see how you can read into that. Of course you can read something into it because, because some other guy did the video and because he mentioned the words, or the words, stonemason, it was a direct link to Freemasonry. Okay, so I guess in this kind of I hate the chosen, let's critique the chosen land, because it does things and tells the Bible in a way that I don't like it, um, we can read whatever we like into what people say. Me that the show tries to justify all of this by presenting the moment when Simon Peter says to Jesus, "Depart from me, for I am a sinner." Depart. From whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, okay, okay. Now what's going to happen here is he's going to bring in some issues about Isaiah as well. Um, Maybe, Caleb, the reason uh, why there's only a few things which um, uh, um, 
they mention here that Simon might have done is because they didn't have enough time space in the video recording in the, making the movie to mention all of your sins Jack Caleb they didn't have enough to mention all of mine that's for sure um, they and so they thought they rather than miss out some of yours they didn't want to include every person's sin on here now we know from scripture that one of the main accusations which was placed against Jesus was that he hung around with prostitutes, drunkards, tax collectors and sinners. He wasn't going to places of wealth. He wasn't going to the rich people. You know, the rich people like, like Muhammad did. But he tried to get people to convert, wanted to hang around with the rich people. Um, the powerful people uh, to get people to convert to Islam to make people think that Islam was the religion of the powerful and cool people. No, Jesus hung around with the lowest of the low. What we see here is a Simon Peter who is the lowest of the low. And in the context of this scene, where you are, which you're so critical of, of you think trying to justify this, let's have a look at what the scene here because um because not many people talk about this the time that peter actually says depart from me because i'm a sinful man okay not a lot of people talk about this let's just watch this thing me i am a sinful man but i don't think that that is enough to justify the way that they have presented simon peter we have to remember uh, i think that's i think it's more than enough when you think about the context, remember this is a TV show, it's a bit of artistic license here. When you think about the context, you've got to remember that Peter has just spent all night screaming out to God. Um, blaming God for ignoring the people for, was it 400 years? About that, wasn't it? Yeah, about 400 years since the last prophecy, since Malachi to that point. Okay, he spent all night blaming God. Okay, now that's that's that once again is art. There's nothing in the scriptures to say Peter actually did that. But reading through the prophets and knowing the hundreds of Christians I know, reading the hundreds of testimonies I've read in my lifetime since I became a Christian, I know. We have all gone through those moments where we've cried out to God, where are you? Why have you put me in this situation? Help me out here. Where are you? Why am I suffering this way? Okay, I think we've all been in the place where Simon Peter is. Now, from this, Caleb's going to also bring in another link with Isaiah. The time that Isaiah falls before God in a scene that in a scene that John's gospel says that Isaiah uh, said he saw Jesus okay and we're gonna see that uh, he's gonna bring up that clip I'll, I'll you, you can you can watch the video but I know I'm, I'll record it anyway but as you're gonna see here he makes that link I'm sorry but he makes a comment on here and I'm just going to play this through through so you'll see the, the comparison he's going to put with this scene with Peter and with the scene from Isaiah when Isaiah hears God and has his uh and says where I'm where is me I'm a man of unclean lips okay just listen to the link that um Caleb makes here and uh I'll let you know my view on the whole thing Simon Peter had just witnessed a powerful miracle done by Jesus. And in yeah. light of seeing who Jesus was, he says, depart from me, for I am a sinner. It yeah, yeah. Once again, after a night of basically screaming out to God, saying, you're ignoring me, blaming God for the situation they're in, as we all do, because we're fallen human beings, uh, I think that's adequate reason to link those scenes together on there.
If we were to compare this to anything else in the Bible, we would compare it to Isaiah. When Isaiah had a vision of God and John tells us that that vision was actually a vision of Christ. And in that moment when he sees God in this heavenly vision, he says, woe is me, I am undone for I am a man of unclean lips and I live among a people of unclean lips and my eyes have seen the Lord. Now imagine for a moment that somebody was to do a movie on the life of Isaiah. And imagine someone was to do a movie on the life of Isaiah. If it's done the way that uh, Caleb wants it to be done, I think it would just be a. I think it would just it would just, it would just be a another another run of the mill Bible show. Simple as that. If someone didn't do it the way Caleb says it should be done, because he doesn't actually say how these things should be done anyway, really, I think basically Caleb would hate that as well. He would dislike it. He would come up with another critique on here. I'm really actually looking forward um, to start hunting through on some of the critiques being made, critiques being made of Jesus Nazareth and that sort of thing, which is a movie which is influential when I was growing up, when I became a Christian. Um, God used that piece of media to speak to me at times and to help me put certain things into context just so I could hear it from a human perspective but it never made me bow down and think that Jesus Christ looked like um, I forgot his name now the actor who played Jesus in Nazareth Robert, uh, Robert Shaw was Robert Shaw? Oh, sorry, forgive me Robert Powell Robert Powell. I, I never started thinking that Jesus looked like Robert Powell after that. Okay, I didn't start bowing down to the image of Robert Powell whenever he came on TV. But uh, this is this is something Caleb doesn't like the chosen because it takes artistic uses artistic license because the actors and directors have put in a, an artistic interpretation on certain things, and Caleb doesn't like it. He wouldn't like a film dramatisation of Isaiah either.